Television making is like sausage, you know? You shouldn't see how it's made. Focus the questions for the interview. Focus the shooting. Shoot just what you need. Make... It should be this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. I'm out of here. It's August the 12th and we've just moved into this building here in Charlotte Street in the middle of London which until last Friday was uh, part of Channel 4 television. The plan now is to get this chaos into working order to transmit Channel 1 by November the 30th. That's just 16 very short weeks, a lot of people out there saying that this can't be done. Uh, I believe we can, in fact we have to. It's not only the birth of a TV station, it's the birth of an idea the first of its kind for London and for Europe. London, one of Europe's leading trading centres since the Romans bridged the Thames 2,000 years ago. London and Grub Street, where shabby hack writers peddled their gossip and the 18th century coffee houses paved the way for Fleet Street to become the home of the world's first mass circulation newspapers. Now, as print yields to television as the main source of news to ordinary people, London starts another communications revolution, a 24-hour television service on which the star of the show is London itself. It's with an investment of 50 million associated newspapers were attempting to launch a 24-hour-a-day city-based news station. Crucial to the channel's success was to be the training of a new breed of journalists, video journalists, men and women capable of writing, shooting and editing their own reports. The high priest of this talent is Michael Rosenblum, an ex-CBS producer who set up Channel One New York and travels the world teaching his methods with a religious fervor. We're at the very beginning of an industry. We're not at the end. 500 years ago, Gutenberg brought movable type to the West. And in doing so, he engendered a fundamental revolution in the way that we communicate with each other. Before Gutenberg, if you wanted to be a writer, if you woke up one day as like a surf and you go, you know, I've had it with the surf business, I really feel like being a writer now. Maybe light fiction or mystery. If you wanted to be a writer, you first went down to the cathedral and you signed up to be a priest. And then you spent your time in the novitiate and you paid your dues, you know, kissing toes or whatever you had to do. And one day they took you into the Sanctum Sanctorum and they said, now we're going to teach you how to write a book. And I got to tell you, book writing, it's a group activity, it takes a long time, it's really expensive, <laughs> and it takes years to learn how to do it. And you go, okay, I'm ready. Right? And, touch and you made these really beautiful golden seeds, really lovely letters, you know, a year to make a book and lots of work and really tucked away and secret, you know, secretive, very secretive. And then along comes Gutenberg and he goes, I want to show you something really cool, right? <laughs> and he goes, check it out. He goes, dun, 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 dun. He goes, look, a book. And of course, all the cynics said, oh, oh, you must be kidding. Look at that terrible print quality. No one will read this, right? <laughs> And he goes, yeah, yeah, you're right, absolutely. Tonk, 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 tonk. And suddenly books flood the population. And pretty soon, everyone is not only reading books, they're writing them. Mm -hmm. Today, video is rapidly replacing print as the primary means of communication. <coughs> and these little cameras, or these little beta cams that we have, they are the Gutenberg's printing press of the 21st century. They make television making universally acceptable. So you no longer have to go sign up and be a monk at the BBC monastery. And you no longer have to spend 20 years paying your dues. 
and doing whatever you have to do to get access to the holy writ. And television making is no longer a secret, expensive, complicated process that takes years and years and years to learn. I believe that we are doing more here than just building a TV station, which we are doing, certainly. But I believe we are engendering and participating in a fundamental and important revolution in democratizing television. It's all made possible by this. A lightweight camera, a third of the cost of a conventional TV camera, with pictures just as good. And with the camera, these young people, a fresh human species on the streets of London, to be known forevermore as video journalists. One video journalist will operate the camera, record the sound, and act as the reporter and interviewer when covering the news, a new way of working in British television. This is a system which just could not have happened before the technology of the 1990s. A camera weighing one stone that can be toted round London by an eight stone VJ. And at the heart of the system, a library store which can pack 1,000 video cassettes and play them out in any order at the touch of the producer's screen. A beautifully simple idea made to work by the latest technical wizardry. It holds a mirror up to London in a way the capital has not known before. There is much to be got ready to put the station on the air in 16 weeks. Miles of wiring, computer programs to be run, new cameras to be tested, editing rooms to be built, and technicians to familiarize themselves with the new methods. The volume of programming makes a conventional TV station look like a part-time store. 1,400 minutes of airtime to put out each day. 170 hours a week. When the advertisement for video journalist appears, 3,000 young hopefuls apply. 30 are chosen. The birth of a TV station starts as 30 VJs report for duty with 16 weeks to go before transmission day. They come from different backgrounds, researchers, newspapers, magazines, secretaries, none with a background as a conventional broadcaster. That's no handicap in this new high-tech TV newsroom. There is simply less to unlearn. I was at the BBC for four years. Um, I worked in production. I've produced and presented Farming Today. Um, I've previously worked at the Mail on Sunday. My background is in television as a researcher. I um, started off in journalism. I've been a journalist for 11 years. Training at The Voice newspaper. Doing entertainment journalism. Radio 4 and Radio 5. Like raw recruits on a barrack square, they are to be drilled mercilessly for the next 12 weeks. Their drill sergeant, Michael Rosenblum, American TV producer, high priest of the new techniques of video journalism. For the next few months, he will be their motivator, tormentor, critic and counsellor. We've set all the cameras on automatic, so they can go out and shoot, and the pictures they come back with are reasonably okay. I'm much more concerned for them to become fluid with the cameras, to get the hang of using the cameras, to feel comfortable with them. If we start them with three days of lectures on white balance and auto iris, and auto, and they're never going to do anything. I don't want them to be afraid of the equipment in any way. Today was the first time we actually got sent out with cameras, and we were just told, um, don't worry about the journalism, um, just shoot some vox pops. But I did worry about the journalism. I thought, how am I ever going to get my brain around this, as well as uh, look at the film footage and listen to the sound? You feel very frustrated with the transport system? Um, well, it's kind of a nuisance, but I mean, it's kind of useful to walk as well. It's good exercise. Well, that was all very, very white. I don't know why. Like virtually out there. It's, it's um, but it might be just the viewfinder. It might not be. Yeah. You might not have seen what you actually. Now, what makes a good cappuccino? Good strong coffee and a, a lot of frothy milk on top. Thanks very much. Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry to bother you. Um, I'm from Channel One Television, and we're just on a training exercise. 500 box pops later. <laughs> okay, my name's Adrian, by the way. Hi, Adrian. Okay, and my question is, is simply this. I'm asking everybody, what do you think will happen to you when you die? 
Right, it's just normally they don't like people sort of uh, oh, well, taking photographs. Oh, well, we did look for security guards and they didn't do any. Can I help you at all? So, yeah. <laughs> um, in 1974, I experienced um, a real death experience. So I know exactly what's going to happen, you know, after I die. Which is that um, basically all the energy in your body comes to one point inside your head. And then um, you leave uh, your body through a little patch on the top here, which is where the Jews wear the little uh, hat and all that sort of thing, you know. Martin, I'm ready to I felt a complete idiot and I thought people were just going to reject me and sort of walk off. Um, but surprisingly, people sort of were quite curious as to what we were doing and once I'd explained what Channel One was, they were, um, they'd do anything. Sorry, two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Um, where are you going? <laughs> that way. <laughs> that way. <laughs> so you think that God will decide who's done good things and who's done bad things? Obviously you have to have a lot of self-confidence to be able to do, to, to think you can do this kind of a job. Uh, when it actually comes down to it, are you going to be able to do it? Are there going to be aspects of the job that, in fact, you may not be able to do as well as other people can do? It's just you with the camera. So you should take the camera and go shoot the piece. I fear about whether I can do it. Will I be able to take photo? Will I be able to take film that's in, in focus? Um, will I be able to manage the camera? Will somebody run off with the camera the minute I appear on the street? If you come back after four weeks and bring back stuff that looks like New York One or BBC, I will consider it a failure because you haven't done enough. What I fear is getting there, getting all the cameras set up and everything, getting ready to take the pictures and then forgetting what I'm going to ask. I'm sure I'm going to be sent out to uh, the court and I'm going to spout libel and defamation all over the place. <laughs> so um, I'll have to watch my words, read my law books. Never for a minute think you are making conventional television. You are not. I think while the idea of going out as a one-man crew um, is very exciting, it's got huge potential, at the same time I think there are inherent problems. You're going to get a lot of antagonism from uh, the ITNs and the BBCs. Um, and there will be situations where you're walking in with a camera, a large camera on your shoulder, um, and you're going to stand out in a big way. Um, I think parking and messing up a story because I couldn't get the equipment or the car parked in the right place at the right time. You are the writers of the video era. I love being behind the camera, but as soon as I get in front of the, ca yeah, in front of the camera, you have to expose yourself to a certain extent, and I'm not too... Uh, comfortable about that. The most difficult thing is the ones who've had previous television experience. The ones that don't have any experience, they don't really think it's that hard. And after they've shot one day, which is the point of the whole exercise yesterday, they realize it's not that hard. It's the people who've had previous experience in, in other television uh, stations or state television or BBC or whatever who have been inculcated with this idea that television is complicated and difficult and expensive and takes years and years to do. None of that is true. Those are the people we have a problem with. You have to beat the crap out of them in a way. The ones who come blank are the best, the most fun to work with. Once again, take three. As launch day draws near, order slowly emerges from the chaos of early days. In a few short weeks, the VJs are getting into shape. They're getting match fit. Rosenblum's evangelism is working. Making television is not the mystique it was just weeks ago. Now, are the teasers from the other end? We'll see. All right. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. How are things going? Well, I'd like to tell you that uh, everything was going all right, but uh, in fact, everything's going wrong. Uh, mixer's just broken downstairs. Uh, we've been let down by one of the suppliers of software. The only thing that is going okay right at this moment is the video journalist training. That seems to be working okay. But uh, we've just got uh, all the sort of problems that you get trying to start something in such a short uh, period of time. By the end of the second week, we are going to start producing programs. So you'll pick an anchor from amongst yourselves, and you'll pick an executive producer, and an assignment editor, and you'll rotate these jobs around. So I want to give you the sense not only of what it is to be a video journalist, but I want to give you a feel for what it means to make a program and to make air. So one day, you're the journalist going, I'm not really ready with that piece, I didn't have enough time, you know. And then the other day, you're the producer, and you go, where's the piece, where's the piece, where's the piece? <laughs> So everyone will have both experiences, and this will teach you better than just lecturing, making air.
the worst, the worst, the worst thing you can do is not make air. It's terrible because we have then we have to put up just a blank screen and we have to put your name here in big letters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we go. You fucked up. <laughs> Hang up there for eight. But it's better already on the camera, so yeah. Yeah, that'd be a much. Yeah. Great stuff. We're going to have a feel for how long it takes you to do all the things that are necessary to make a piece, from making your initial phone calls, to shooting your stuff, to writing the script, to tracking, to editing. So you are adults, you will have to back time where you are in terms of doing the script. Progress is remarkable. Some VJs are already producing reports that any news producer would be glad to broadcast on a network evening news. It was pouring with rain outside, so I was getting rained on as well as worrying about my lighting and my focus. It seems almost out of place amongst an arena of American blockbusters. There's just so much to remember with white balance, filter, iris, not to mention trying to write the script in your head as you go along. I didn't press record. <laughs> Okay, let's start that one again then. <laughs> oh, the noddies, yeah. The Harry Christians in the centre of London are colourful, vibrant, visually exciting and different, and that's the main reason I chose them. Can't stand the thought of filming something too conformist and average. As the quiet revolution gathers pace, well, my assignment today is to go and make a piece about uh, a shop called Anything Left Handed in uh, Brewer Street. Well, Delta Coal, Channel One, Central London. And only in actual fact, most passers by completely ignore you. It feels so subconscious. I forgot where I was. Did that wrong? Right, take two. It was very difficult to try and keep the object in focus because I was having to do that manually and um, that's not an easy thing to do when you're inexperienced with a beta cam. Oh dear. Oh. Oh. Art or graffiti? To me, these kind of drawings are graffiti. I wouldn't welcome them on my home. It's clear the residents here don't welcome them on theirs. I have enough of the right stuff to string together something that will work just about, but I'm not convinced that it will actually be terribly exciting. Uh, I realised when I got out that all the batteries I had were dead. So I had to run all the way back from Covent Garden here to get some more batteries. <laughs> you know, I just I love that feel of the, of the camera on the street and people talking to you. It's just extraordinary. I mean, I just... I like that a lot, and uh, I like this feeling of um, being a kind of media gorilla. <laughs> when you're by yourself, you've got to think of the camera angle, the camera story, the sound, the lighting. It's been four people's jobs, and you've got to try and keep it all in your head. We got chucked out of a few more shops today uh, for not clearing with, with head office again. I needed a bald man to uh, finish it. I needed it from a punchline. You can never get a bald man when you want one. <laughs> At 5 p.m. each day during training, the video journalists display their efforts to their instructor and to each other after a day of shooting out in the streets. Rosenblum doesn't pull punches. This really sucks. <laughs> this is really bad. Uh, this St. Vitus dance? <laughs> yes, well then pull out a little wider, you know what I mean? What was the wait a minute? What is that? <laughs> oh, that is really bad. That is really bad. That is terrible. 
Rosenblum's a master of torture and he just loves putting the needles in one by one and your colleagues are howling with laughter. You have to join in because you either laugh or you cry. <laughs> What was going through your mind when you did that? There was no action. In there was no action. <laughs> so you thought, you thought this will make it really exciting. <laughs> Let's do a little of this stuff. That was really, that was really appalling. That was, don't ever do that again. That was terrible. Awful. You want to... <laughs> Close up of the dripping coffee into the cup, then he puts the cream on the coffee and then he serves it to the uh, customer. And in fact, the cup. So it's the street scene first, and then when we say Soho, we cut to the street side. Okay. I found that the editing process is when you really uh, see whether your piece works or not, whether you really got the right shots or not, and you can tell within a couple of minutes. Right. Editing is really the moment of truth. Sort of thing. As long as you have a few select people making television and millions of people watching it, television by definition is going to be bad because the vast majority of creative people never get a chance to try it. Most people will not be able to make great television. Some will. And maybe in this group of 30, we have two or three really, really great, clever, creative television journalists. The only way to find out is to give everybody cameras and let them try it. So, and what's, what's the alarm thing for? If you, um, you get certain alarms that be bought. Most significantly, you'll get an alarm that goes off when your battery is two minutes from failure, or your tape is two minutes from ending. Good. And that little alarm switch. Here's what you do. Hey, guys. Batteries. Batteries. Get your assignment. Okay. All, all we're going to do is just go out and roll some tape, just so you know, we, the white balance and all that stuff. Yeah. It's a very simple exercise. This afternoon, we'll go shoot a piece. Difficult to say at the present think, stage. Do you think there's going to be another strike? <laughs> the cameras are a lot less manageable than I thought they would be. Um, it's very interesting that the one-to-one, -one, the intimacy you get with the subject is, is very interesting indeed. Um, I, as a reporter, before I was a news editor, was used to standing alongside a cameraman and having the, the subject talk to me. It's very interesting when you're behind the lens. Yeah. I found the easiest technique is to ask them to look directly into the lens because they have a tendency to look at, at your face hidden behind the, uh, the, the viewfinder. Um, you can feel the intimacy coming through the lens. They are actually talking to the camera, it's almost as if they feel some of them that they're addressing the nation. Now place the camera on your shoulder, your turn on the PowerPoint, the mic. Aye, 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 this is a job that you will come to.
course is heavier than I thought it would be, um, mainly because I just assumed that we'd be learning parts of produ camera production, but in fact we're learning everything. I've enjoyed using the camera a lot. I think, you know, that's been one revelation. It was the, the, the fun and the, how creative it is to, to, to use the beta cam. The downside is that um, uh, there's always something wrong with my pictures when I bring them back. Uh, after the initial um, feeling of being overwhelmed but with so much technology and everything, I'm, just, I'm having a great time. I don't think I've worked harder in the whole of my professional career, but it's been brilliant. And if you're on your own, then you have to trust your own gut instincts or feelings that what you're doing is valid or viable. And being a one-man crew, you're out there on your own. What works in training is all about? Confidence grows. The VJ system originated in America, looks better every day. There is relief all round. The system works. Now what? Well, don't be surprised if you see your boss dancing like a butterfly before long. David Hurst, Channel One, Waterloo. Uh, there's a big improvement over the last story. I think you're getting it. Watch the focus. A couple of times your focus is way off and maybe it's the back focus. But then I think it's really nicely shot. I think you tell a nice coherent story. I think it works. A big improvement. You still done that? That's the end. That's it. That's the last screening. Now, I officially pronounce you video journalists. You have graduated from the course. You are now prepared to go out. And as such, you are members of a very small, elite, select group worldwide. There are about 100 people like you around the world who are doing this. I know the station is behind you. Everybody's out to make the best thing they possibly can. And uh, it was a real pleasure. Each video journalist will be expected to produce between four and six minutes a day of cut footage. We're looking at an overall output, an original output each day of between four and six hours, some of which will be video journalism, some will be long-form programming, some will be studio interviews, and so on. Channel One's going to be an awful lot more than just television news. Uh, we'll be the best and the fastest television news in London but there'll be a great deal more for our viewers. We'll give them a flavour of what it's like to be in one of the greatest cities in the world. Sport, entertainment, the arts, eating out, consumer affairs, everything they need to know about the city. We'll hear their voice as well. Uh, we'll give them the sort of programmes that, that they need. We will give them the news, but we'll give them a whole lot more as well. We've had a few uh, setbacks, we've had a few problems, all the sort of things that you expect in a very fast-track project, but I'm pleased to say that I'm totally confident now that we're going to launch tomorrow, as planned, 1 o'clock, the 30th of November. I wish I had actually met every one of you personally before we go over the top together, and we, I'm going to tell you, it is going over the top together, but I feel I, I do know a lot through all the paper and all the video that I've been watching back at the Daily Mail. Um, in case any of you don't know, I am the guy that got the £50 million out of the board to set up this little wonderful little empire here, and so I'm responsible for all your jobs, every single one of you owes your job to me. But as from tomorrow, when we go on air, you've got to make a success or failure of it, and I suddenly realise that I owe my job from tomorrow midday to you. Go out there and win, and remember we're in for the long, long ride. And no drinks tonight, because we have to be on air, but tomorrow night, plenty of drinks. <laughs> and thank you very much indeed, everybody. Channel One Television is not aiming to compete with the big established networks. There's little point in taking on the multi-million resources of the Big Brothers. Besides, that would not offer anything new and distinctive. Good afternoon and welcome to a new chapter in television history. This is Channel One, cable television for the London area. I'm Paddy Haycox. And I'm Fiona McDermott. Channel One is on-air broadcasting news and factual programmes 24 hours a day, every day. 
We'll bring you news, features, sport, entertainment and all the things that make London one of the world's most exciting cities. We'll be telling you more about ourselves over the next few hours, but we start with the top news stories of the hour. In Channel One, the rallying cry is, what can we do that the other networks cannot do? And the answer is, a lot. The big asset is the limitless flexibility of a 24-hour service. News when the viewer wants it, not when the programme schedulers say they can see it. It's uh, like Christmas, you know, you think this, never, this day will never come, but it always does. And uh, this is 18 months of work, and uh, now we're here, we're on the air, and I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing. Uh, I'm amazed. There was much less panic than I thought um, around me. Um, and I just got on with my story. It felt like any other day. I was in a taxi and I realised we'd launched live. It's been incredibly exciting getting caught up in the whole um, manicness of it all. And I suppose part of the reason why I'm feeling that way and I'm feeling that it, it's all, it is all consumed is because I've wanted to get involved and it has been incredibly exciting. About three hours this afternoon. Julian, I think right. you and I should should really talk. what will happen is that everything will get more organized and so your structure your week more and it'll get a little less manic but I've certainly learned a lot in the last three months um, and I hope I'm on a curve still hope I haven't plateaued that would be scary I, I love doing this kind of job um, uh, I like local news better than national or international news it's really uh, it's interesting and it's great to feel part of a city. If you've got a great story, you can make sure you get the most compelling shots. And I think that the total control over it is, you just can't beat it. There's nothing else. I mean, I wouldn't be there with everything else. I might get paid for it. <laughs> takes one video journalist to get a story. Hello, my name is Julia Caesar. Sasha Van Strand. Patrick O'Higgins. Oni Bettachon. Channel One has more video journalists covering London's news than the BBC, ITN and Sky News put together. Ben Jones. Stephen Lee. Amra Haider. Adrian Holloway. Tim Woolgar. We'd like to introduce you to all of them. Peter Garnett. Richard Stafford. David Jimmer. Kate Ashley. Peter Woolrich. Dan. Here are just some. Martin Hennessy. Dan Rowland. Richard Van. If you live or work in London, Channel One has the news you can use.